Hello, gentles and ladymen. I am Bison Gaming, and I am here with a new episode of creating a Yomi Hustle mod character. In today's episode, we have a lot to do, as we will be looking at a multitude of different things today. We will be looking at how to make a super move, how to give an attack armor so that it's not interrupted, how to make attack chains, and how to make particle effects. Lots to go over today. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. I have been spending a lot of time working out uh, the animation for this attack, but we are going to be making our other super move today, uh, which is a three hit chain with an alternate uh, with two alternate finishers. Uh, and it is based off of this attack from Horror Lose Boss Fight. slam, stomping into the ground, and then ripping it out. That is the inspiration for this attack, and that is what we are trying to emulate to a degree uh, with, with our characters. So, uh, we I already have all of our animations loaded in, with the exception of the particle one, because that is going to require something a little different. Uh, but we have I have them listed as Earthquaker 1, 2, 3, and Earthquaker alternate finish. Uh, so now next what we're going to do is we are of course going to be creating a node for this attack So we're going to go to our state machine and add a child node add a node 2d and we're going to rename this Earthquaker Now we need to add a script for this so we're just going to add a new script uh, We're gonna save it in our states folder of course and we're gonna create. And we are going to delete everything, but we, this is the first part that you have to do, because if you um, if you just take a look at, say, Axe Teleport's script, uh, or, or sorry, Axe Hurl's script, which uses the Axe Throw here, uh, you can see that up in here we have Extends Super Move, and this is so that uh, when you have this, you get this section here, uh, th this super level, super levels used, uh, a super freeze tick and so on that that shows up during uh, th th this shows up by adding extends super move instead of extends character state like we normally would and we need this here so that we can set our super level and so on and so forth so uh, we are going to be so we are going to be going back to uh, our earthquaker here and we are going to uh, take a look at our Earthquaker script, and we are going to hit Extends Super Move. And this makes it so that now, whenever we go back here and we scroll down, uh, we can see, where is it? Uh, yeah, we, we can see Super Level, Super Use, Super Freeze Tick, and Super Effect. So th this is what we need right here. Uh, in order to make this functional. Now, uh, for testing purposes, we, we're actually going to add the super levels at the, as the last thing we do. And this is so that whenever we hit play right here to test out our attack, uh, it's not just going to automatically, uh, it, it's not just going to automatically, you know, set our, our, our make, require us to hustle like three times in a row in order to test our attack. So we're actually going to set our super level to zero. So the super level here tells you exactly how many super le levels of super you need before the attack is actually available. But this is actually separate from supers used. So you could have an attack that doesn't appear until you have max super if you wanted, but, uh, but an attack that costs zero super to use. And as such, uh, it would be very, very difficult to attain this attack. But once you have max super, you'd be able to just spam it out no problem so long as you maintained that. Uh, and and so and yeah, that, that's just kind of how that works. But for now, we're going to use a zero super level. Um, next, we are of course going to uh, tie an animation as we normally would and get our animation fully fleshed out. To pick our sprite animation of Earthquaker One. And our animation length, this is very important because this, this actually is going to be extremely relevant here. Uh, but we're going to set our animation length to be probably 40 for now. Uh, but 
this is an attack that I do not intend to be cancelable or hit cancelable. So however many frames that we make this animation length is how long you're going to be stuck here uh, doing this animation. So we'll set it to 40 for now and fix it later should, should it need changing. Um, we're probably going to set it to two ticks per, per frame. Uh, we're going to enter a static force of... Uh, we're going to enter a, a static force of one here for the direction of X so that he just goes forwards. And we'll do a force speed of probably two. I think that that should do it just fine. Uh, we will be coming back to particles later, but for now we don't need it. Um, at least not for this attack in particular. And here we are going to hit show in menu. We are going to make this a super. We are going to title it Earthquaker. Oh, a little bit of a sticky E key here. It is now showing up in the menu. We actually need to set up a, a button uh, texture for this, which I actually forgot to do. Uh, so give me one second and I will get that done very lickety split. Okay, I am back. We are setting up our button texture. I have just created it uh, pretty much just now. So we're going to go button texture, load, mod file, so on and so forth. Uh, Earthquaker, there it is. There's our button. And now I'm pretty sure, I'm not going to mess with anything else just yet, but I'm pretty sure that this attack should be functional. Uh, no, it, it, we, we are still missing something somewhere. You know, it took me a while to figure out what what uh, was, was causing this to, to not show up. Uh, it's because we need to do the interrupts uh, from and into. So, so we're just going to do grounded and grounded attack. As well, uh, both here and here. And now it should show up. Bingo! Okay, next thing we're going to do is add armor to our attack. Now, it took me a while to figure out how to do this, but what I ended up doing is basically going through the files here uh, and finding the and finding an attack that did have armor, uh, specifically Conjure's Blade from Wizard, and then copying the script for that attack and deleting out any unnecessary stuff because there is nothing in the inspector here that actually has to do with armor and we have to do it manually so to make it super easy for you guys i have draw i have everything right here uh that you can just copy and paste directly into your attack so we're just going to copy and we're going to paste this into earthquaker one and this right here, frame uh, underscore frame underscore three, this can be any number here, but this is the frame that your hyper armor is going to start, which I'm going to keep at three here. And then this is the the part where your hyper armor ends, which we want this to be hyper armored through the entire attack. So I'm just going to go uh, up to 40 here. And and that is that that's basically all there is to it. Once you have this, you'll be able to have hyper armor on your attack. It's just as simple as that. It's probably the easiest thing in this video. Okay, so our attack that we have here now has some hyper armor. So if we uh, go test it out, uh, we, we can see this visually. Indeed. See, now, now, now we have hyper armor throughout this whole thing. All right. Uh, and what we want to do next is uh, be able to chain it into everything else. However, we want it to complete all 40 frames of its animation before we actually go into the next part of the uh, part of the attack, right? So what we need to do in a lot of cases, uh, if you want attacks to be followed by specific things, you can do hit cancel into string and then you can name that attack directly. 
However, we don't want our attack to hit cancel. We want to actually finish all of the animations, right? So instead, what we're going to do is change our stance. So the stances are really easy. You don't actually need to, you're, you're just coming up with a name. There's no uh, complex programming or anything, but uh, this is directly after Earthquaker 1. So we're just going to call the stance EQ1. Right? And then when we create our second attack, when we uh, are in this thing right here, we are just going to hit allowed stances string and set that as EQ1 instead of normal. Uh, so now we're just going to create another node. And, and from here, all we need to do is go down to stances and get rid of normal and instead put EQ1. And now we should be able to uh, go into our game here. Oh, wait, no, we actually do need to do one more thing because this is a super. We need to set this to, these to zero so that we can test it without actually having any super on us. And see, now we have Earthquaker 2 here. Which needs to apply some full momentum to it so that the axe doesn't move. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. It's, it's not moving as much. And obviously if we block low, that's going to bring us back to back to the central, right? But from here, uh, we are going to go down and go to our next stance and say change stance to uh, EQ3. Or not EW, EQ3. And this is going to make it so that when we do after this attack, we can follow it with the final attack in the chain. Okay. And uh, oh, it looks like we, we we messed up somewhere. Okay, so there's a... Okay, we are back. I have fixed that weird issue where we were going back to the wait animation for just a single frame before continuing our chain. Uh, it was because Earthquakers 2 and 3 had nothing in the interrupt into string, only the interrupt from, whereas the initial Earthquaker had both. Uh, it took me a embarrassingly long time to figure this out, um, but now, uh, uh, but now, um, I was just doing, using this for some testing, uh, we, we have everything good to go. Additionally, while I was away, I went ahead and added the Earthquaker Alt, which is an alternate finish that you can do after the first swing. So. Uh, with all four animations into our character, uh, Earthquaker functions as such. The first hit carry uh, the first hit slams the opponent into the ground. I added a little bit of screen shake there. I'm going to do that for all of them. I'm going to show you how to do it for the next ones. But uh, for th this, for the purpose of here, just you know, we have a bit of screen shake. You know, then we can do either Earthquaker two, where he does the 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 stomp. Or we can do the alternate finisher, in which he rips it out of the ground, causing a huge explosion. And after this, it would go right back down to neutral. Uh, after Earthquaker 2, once again, once again, you are given a, a similar option uh, to do the Earthquake finisher, which functions rather uh, familiarly. I, I need to remove some of the static force from this, it looks like. So, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to go to Earthquaker 3 and lower the force on that. Let's see here. Earthquaker 3 has a force of 3. Yeah, that's too much. We're going to change that to 1. 
And we're going to see how that looks. Yes, yeah, that looks a lot smoother. Just a, a simple little uh, forward momentum, but not a whole lot. So, next we have to take a look at our explosion animation that we are going to be using on two of our of these four attacks. And this is, uh, let, me get, let me show you guys what the explosion animation actually looks like. Right, this is what our particle explosion looks like. Just rocks and debris flying up. That's all it is. It doesn't need to be anything fancier than that, I don't think. It gets the job done. Okay, so I went down the particle effects rabbit hole and it ended up being not quite what I thought it was. So uh, I ended up per going after uh, some, uh, going after the explosion effect that I was after in a different way, where I took the whole animation and basically turned it into a projectile. Uh, so we, I, 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 and this one, it, although I was not confident at all in my abilities to explain uh, projectiles the first time, I can explain it a little better here because this is about the simplest projectile that you can possibly make. So I went over here to search files, and I actually did this by myself without needing any help, and I'm pretty proud of it. But I went, uh, but I searched base and found base projectile here and hit new inheritance scene. Uh, then I saved it in the same folder as. As Horolu, uh, as Rock Explosion, which is what you see here. Then I went and uh, went to the sprites and input, uh, went into frames and hit new sprite frames, uh, and basically added all of my animation uh, that that I had. Uh, th th this animation here is is what I added. Um, then I went to the default state right here. Well, first I went into the collision hitbox and hurtbox and I just deleted them. I made them, as you can see, uh, oh, I, I guess I didn't, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the, the hitbox and hurtbox aren't going to do anything because it's not like anything is going to cancel out this, this projectile, but we're going to make them zero so that there is literally nothing that this projectile can hit or be hit by. So when this pro when this projectile spawns, it just does its thing. And that makes sense because it's going to happen no matter what, because our character is going to do it no matter what, because he is uh, armored. Uh, then I went ahead and... Uh, then I went, I went ahead and go, went to the default state here, and I chose, if you, if you want to make your projectile actually have a hitbox, you would add a hitbox here. Uh, but I went down to the default uh, code here, which is the, the code for, for fireballs, and I basically just deleted everything that, that I didn't need. Anything involving hitboxes, anything involving like that. And uh, this is what my, my code basically looks like. It basically just says, hey, after 30 frames, fizzle and disappear, uh, because that's how long the animation is. Uh, for the, the animation itself, um, the, the rock explosion animation, we have 10 total frames. Uh, and then after the t and they are played at a rate of uh, three ticks per frame for a total animation length of thirty, and then it disappears. So let me just went to Horolu and I went to Earthquaker three, which which has this. So does or, or so does Earthquaker alternate. And uh, I just went to the I I didn't use any coding. I just did the the simple projectile start here and uh, did the and chose the frame that I wanted to start and then I messed around with the position in order to to figure out the x and y values uh, then I went ahead and added screen shake to every single attack here screen shake is super super easy and I will show you guys it right now uh, this first number right here is what frame that you want the screen shake to start uh, this is how long the screen shake goes, measured in seconds, so 0 0.25 is 0 0.25 seconds. Uh, X and Y, this determines how far um, 
th th this determines how far uh, to the left, right, up, and down uh, the the screen will shake. So if you want like the screen to just shake all over the goddamn place, you can just set it to thirty and basically see absolutely nothing that takes place and transpires in there. Uh, and then screen uh, state screen shake amount is basically you know the amount, but it, the, it, what's important is that this number is going to be stretched over the length. So you could have a small amount, but a very long time, and have a very slow screen shake if you wanted. Uh, and and you could do vice versa as well, where you can have it be super spazzy in a short burst. But what we ended up with is this set for the super attack. It's going to load in. I'm going to set no player to input. Uh, so we have screen shake on the first one. And then we have an alternate here. Uh, and then we have... We can, we can go back in, and then stomp on the ground, and then do the finisher. And I think that looks pretty damn good, right there. Yeah, look at that, that looks so cool. And that is basically everything that, that we have done here so far. So all that's left then, uh, now that we have all the frame data p figured out and everything like that, uh, Earthquaker lasts 35 frames, so I can get the whole animation in. Uh, Earthquaker 2 lasts 30, and Earthquaker 3 lasts a staggering 40, and the Earthquaker alternate lasts uh, 40 as well. I think we can actually lower this one. Uh, I don't think this one lasts for very long, so let's take a look. We have Sprite. And we can go to Earthquake or Alternate. We only have 12 frames here, so that's 24. We want to add a little bit of lag time, so um, let's go ahead and, and lower the animation from 40 to probably 29, and that will leave a that that will leave five frames where we are vulnerable to hits. And in fact, I will actually take off the hyper armor during those five as well. So we will go here, lower the animation from 40 to 29, and then we are going to go to the code for this particular attack and set the hyper armor to get off us starting on frame 24. So that leaves five total frames where we are at the very end of the attack where we can't move and we can't do anything like that. Next, we need to make the attack uncancelable because this is something that uh, would be absolutely bullshit if you could free cancel it. So uh, let's see what we can do here. All right, so we'll leave the burst cancel on uh, just because, you know, we, we might as well uh, make, make it so that you can use a burst. I mean, a burst is an expensive resource. Uh, but we're not, we're going to turn off self it cancelable, self interruptible. Uh, we are going to keep reversible, might as well. Uh, we're going to take off instant cancelable. No, let's do that because that costs super. You know, so you should be able to do that. Uh, and force faintable can faint if possible. No. Okay. And I think there's something around here for free cancels as well. Where are you? I'm not sure. Let's go take a look. Let's test it. Okay, yeah, we can't free cancel now. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And now we have to add a hitbox. So the important thing about this attack is that if the first hit lands, the other two are supposed to be guaranteed. So that's going to be the most challenging aspect of this. Um, and, and we also want to have the animation where the guy gets floored on the ground, right? Uh, so we're going to start adding hitboxes. We're going to add a child node. And go at node to D. And then we are going to load the hitbox script. And we are going to play around with this. All right, we have our hitbox in position. Now we have to decide a damage number. Now, I want this attack to hurt a fucking lot. 
This is a very high risk, high costing supers attack. It deserves to hit like a goddamn truck. Uh, so, with that said, we're going to start the first hit at probably 120. Because we have to keep on, we have to split the damage across three hits. I'm going to set the minimum damage to 60, just because. This is just going to be a normal hit. Uh, the hit stun ticks, we're going to have this ju just to be safe and make sure that we can uh, we, we can reach the next attack. We're going to put like a whole second of hit stun on this. Yeah, we're, it's going to hit versus grounded, hit versus aerial, uh, can counter hit. That looks good. It is going to force grounded. This cannot clash. Uh, I don't think I want it to beat grab. I, th I think that would be a little unfair. We will work out the sound effects later. For now, I just want this to work. Uh, for the knockback, we are going to go at zero in the X, and we are going to go one in the Y. Or we're just going to go positive in the Y. So it's going to shoot you straight down into the ground, and the knockback is going to be one. Yeah, we are going to do knockdown and knockdown extends hit stun. Uh, we're gonna do hard and knockdown. Like we're just gonna make this thing like fucking floor you, is what we want. All right, now for the frame data. Now this is we are working on twos here. So if we go to our sprite earthquaker one, uh, this is hitting on the it looks like the twenty second frame. So now we're going to to go back. our frame data start tick is going to be 22 active ticks will be three frames long uh, we'll, we'll go four actually I'm, I'm being generous with this attack don't don't expect this to be the norm all right let's let's see if this is functional Okay, well he's not on the ground, so let's uh, let's do something else. Okay, so I ended up figuring it out. It actually is based on uh, this right here. So we have grounded hit state and aerial hit state. Uh, these are normally hurt grounded and hurt aerial, but you can change them to hard knockdown. And when you change it to hard knockdown. Uh, it ends up resulting in exactly what you might expect. We're just going to inch forward a little bit, and then BAM! Now he's on the floor. Uh, however, he does seem to be able to get up before I am ready. Uh, so we, we do need to, to fix that in order to make the second attack uh, guaranteed. It might be victim hit lag that we use. Let's change this to like two whole seconds and 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 see uh, what that does for us. One hundred frames of hit lag. Let's go. Only the best for Horalu, am I right? Yeah, we're just doing this as a test. This is obviously. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that that'd do the trick. <laughs> yeah, I I think I quite like that. All right, let's stick with that. That seems to work just fine. All right, now I, with that out of the way, all I have to do is add the other hitboxes on the rest of the attacks, and we are done.
So just real quick, as an extra side note, if you want something to hit somebody while they are in a hard knockdown state, you do need to check this box right here in Hit Properties, titled Hits OTG, standing, I'm assuming, for hits on the ground. But once you check this, you're able to actually hit an enemy while they are on the ground. We are currently two out of the four hits active, uh, and we, we, and we can do this. <laughs> oh damn straight this 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 feels good all right okay later bye and the hitboxes are all set this took me quite a while to do i must say but i did this whole thing on my own uh, without help and i am so happy and proud of, of, of my accomplishment here <laughs> Look at this. Oh, that's so cool. Uh yeah, you can you can bet your ass I'm gonna be doing this against people. <laughs> Alright. Uh this is gonna be all for today, gentles and ladies and oh Actually, there is one more thing that we need to do, and that is adjust the super level. So, Earthquaker 2, 3, and Alternate are all going to be free. Uh, and, and in exchange for... Because the, all that matters is that you start the chain. And the chain start, therefore, needs to be very expensive. So I'm thinking uh, that we need five levels of super. I could lower it to four. I'm not sure. Uh, I actually think I will lower it to four. Uh, and this way, you need four levels of super in order to perform this ability, which I think is reasonably fair. Thank you very much for watching, gentles and ladymen. Have a great day, and goodbye.